What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Movie Files. Joining me as always in the catbird seat in the top spot. It's my early chief. Oh, hey. <laughs> Usually it's bro shot. Uh, hey, look. Uh, what's up, man? What's going on, y'all? Cool it, man. Cool it. Jace, bro shot. How are you today? Doing good. Doing well. Outstanding. Let's see who all we got here hanging out with us in the chat early. Atham Child. Hello. Chamberlain Parks. What's up? Hello, hello, hello. Ryan Daly's here. Evening, fellas. What's up, man? Snake Eyes. Howdy. Okay. Okay. James Green. What's going on, good people? What's up, man? What 80s kid and 90s. I like an order of chili fries with extra cheese. Careful with that. But hold the beans. What is up, my people? What's up, <laughs> bro? Hmm. Ryan says, excited to hear opinions on more Star Wars, the perfect franchise that absolutely nobody has negative or conflicting feelings about. Not so sure if that's the case. We'll see. Let the good times roll. Very conveniently placed, Jamie, right after we mentioned Star Wars. Let's go, Acolyte! Blake Tarby, what's up, Jeff, Jason, Chief, and What's going on, guys? Blizzy. What's going on, everybody? I feel like I could just take a wheel and spin it. Where to go first? Let's start with this one. Invincible's back. I feel like it felt like it, it had been a long time. It had. I think the last new episode was back in November, if I remember that correctly. It was a very long break, and I think because of the Christmas holiday, it felt even longer. And we finally returned. Let me see. This I'm making sure I say this accurately. Because I, I was looking back through my notes, like, when was this last episode? November 24th. And that episode was titled, It's Been a While. So when we got the next episode, March 14th, it really was a while. Tomorrow we get the new episode, episode six. It's been a long time coming to get more Invincible. And I was really happy when I watched the episode this, this past week. It was good. It felt like, ah, Invincible's back. And that's a show I never feel like. I don't know how this is going to pull off. Is it going to be any good? Eh, this one wasn't a great episode. This was really lame and mediocre. What you think about? The Invisible episode? I didn't, I didn't, I, I never went back to it. Mm. And, and, and um, I think everybody knows why. You know what I mean? I, I hate waiting. So now they're waiting. You understand what I'm saying? Now, it's just the principle behind it. I know nobody cares. There's no studio director like, oh, Chief's not watching. But I'm not watching. You know what I mean? I'm going to wait until I feel like it, you know? Because I felt like it three months ago. I don't feel like it this week. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So you already know what I'm, where I'm at. I'm, I'm petty. I've been petty. I'm the pettiest person you know. I've been petty all my life. Mr. Pettyman is my middle name. And that's just how I feel. So I'm not going to watch it. And then when Rebel Moon comes back, I'm not going to watch it the first week. I'm just, <laughs> so, I mean, look, and, and super, I'm telling you, Superman, all these, all these, no. So I'm just going to, yeah, pettiness as petty does. <laughs> Shameless says, I wait and binge Invincible. I read all this, so I don't have to worry too much about spoilers. That's true. And Chief, you're not going to have a very long wait because it's only three more episodes. The final three are tomorrow, then the 28th, and the 4th. And maybe the timing on this is weird. Why start the show back up right when March Madness is about to kick off? It's a little weird in terms of the timing. Granted, people can watch this whenever, but... How many, how many episodes is it? Four for the back half of season two. Hold on, hold on. That's, and then it's over? So it's not over. That's the well, end I'm saying that it's the end of season two. Yes. Do you feel like a sucker? I don't feel like a sucker. I well, enjoy so you it. Waited, you waited three months for four episodes, bro? They, they could have just I mean, gave you. I feel like that's just. That's just it's, it's wrong. It is wrong that they did this. They should not have waited three months to give you four episodes. I feel like that is trifling as hell, <laughs> and 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 I'm highly irritated. I can tell. 
So it's no that like what was the purpose of making us wait if the other the, the first original was six episodes, right? The first season? No, I don't no, I'm, I'm talking about not, I'm talking about first half of the season was how many episodes? Five. Five? No, no, it was just four. Yeah. It's only eight this season. So we, we had to come in. It's only eight episodes a season. In fairness, last season was only eight episodes too. But they, they we didn't have to wait, did we? No break. But I think this break is the fallout from the writer's strike. So I think that's what happened. Fallout from the writers and actors strike. So I think that's some of this break. This is a pretty long one. I think that's what happened with it. Tough guy. What's up, Mark? What's going on, Mark? Mark. Okay. Is is any of this because they have such the quality of the voice actors is taking so long for them to actually get the lines in and they have like different schedules? Because this no, because it's not like they're recording in the same booth anymore. It's just do your lines and they can do that remotely. Yeah, I've I've seen them get their mic, they can do it whenever wherever. But eight episodes really isn't. It's. I'm telling you, I would bet money it was the writer strike, the writers and actors strike. That no, really causes it's, no, delay. Jeff. That, that's not because this was already a planned break before the actors strike. They had literally planned and said, "Hey, we're going to give you guys the back half of season two. and that's when they said, to, "Hey, we're greenlit for season three, but we're it's going to be here's this this tranche, then the next one." And then, you know, we'll get back to, you know, taking two years to give you another invention. Season three is coming this year. All of it? I mean... <laughs> what? <laughs> when did you turn into Chief? Man? No, because... I mean, out of the two! Again, I, 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 have, I literally have not... I mean, if you're going to tell me... I, as I said, I got beef with Amazon. The fact that, hey, we want you to pay $3 more for ads. And then, oh, yeah... For our content, not even some <laughs> content that we have to license. This is literally the stuff that we make. So we want you to pay more money for the stuff. We make. Oh, yeah, and we're only going to give you eight episodes. Like, no, that's trash. <laughs> I will tell you that there were two commercial breaks, and there were three commercials in them. And, you know. Just, oh, in this episode? I mean, well, they don't, I mean, they just break. I don't, I don't think these shows are setting up for commercial breaks. I and think they're, they're not. just replaced them by Amazon. That's the problem. Oh, it's, you know how you know how a TV show has a specific, hey, this scene is going to lead to an ad break. No, with this new stuff, it just throws it randomly in the wrong time, mid-sentence. Oh, somebody could be getting punched. Hey, would you like to see this another product of would you like to see Monday night football or Thursday night football? No, I don't want to watch waste time on this crap. Like, give me eight episodes. I need it all. I mean, at one time, done. Let me binge this stuff. I, right, and until that, I'm, I mean, especially until after March Madness, you have no chance, especially getting released on a Thursday. I'm not breaking March Madness to watch a show with ads unless it's basketball, which I can flip to another channel. No. Uh, I love wow. seeing the world burn. It really <laughs> cheap. You just, just set a match on the Jays. He was like, bring on more gasoline. Dudes is irritated. How much more? How much more are you going to lose from big business? How much more are they gonna take? How much? How much more money do they need to make? Um, and 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 slap the consumer in the face while they do it. I mean, he's right. Four episodes. I mean, eight episodes. Come on. That's. And then you gonna break up the eight? That's just. It's just just disrespectful. And then you got commercials now. That's just disrespectful as hell. Yeah. That's just. You know what I mean. It, it just, it's, at, are the, aren't the commercials louder than the actual TV show you're watching? Well, they definitely are. But like I said, I just hit mute. So, and I, I go, oh, I got three minutes of ads. Cool. You'll stay on mute until like that. Three minutes. Second this, last. Show is, how, this is a show that is roughly 22 minutes. No, no. Invincible is longer. It's, um, they're more of like an hour for their episodes. It's 51 okay. minutes for this last one. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so no love for Invincible. I yeah. like the episode. I think whenever you guys get around to watching the back half of season two, 
you're going to enjoy it. I do agree with you that the commercials excuse me, suck and aren't great in terms of viewing experience because this stuff wasn't meant to have commercial breaks and it's like <laughs> listening to a podcast or something. And you can't pay out of them, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, you can pay four bucks a month and, and you know, go commercial free. Oh, but I feel like Amazon Prime is not gone down to compensate for the ads that they're going to get for people paying to get rid of them. So, because even, even Netflix, I mean, I, I, I looked at it recently. They said, hey, would you like to go save to a $7 plane and, sa- and save yourself 40% just to go add and we put in some ads? Say, okay, you, you're at least giving me a trade off. Save some yeah. money now. Be more annoyed. Amazon, hey, would you like to see this 1980s movie that you haven't watched or thought about watching? <laughs> well, we're going to ask you to pay some more money for it. Like, would you like to pay $20 a month for really one show? Probably a quarter. Now nah, I'm good. Mm-hmm. They get you at the drive through My buddy says, Invincible is great. Plot, characters, animation, etc. It's filling that superhero void left by Marvel. It's so good. Like, the voice acting is outstanding. Man. Bro, I, I like definitely one of the the perks of the show, the animation, the fight scenes. It is definitely brutal 80s kids, so I wouldn't think you would watch it. Mm-hmm. Lots of gore, yeah. lots of violence, maybe wow. a little bit over the top at times, but it is really entertaining if you can stomach it, which I'm pretty sure you would not. No. Like, man, I, I want to see it. I want to watch it, but I just, and I, it, it, it's good. It's a good show. I just, I just don't like being irritated. Was before I watch something, and they're, they're irritating me with this. Well, I mean, going eighties, eighties, it's it's too violent. Like if you don't like, if it's a, it has its a mature rating. It's not. It, this is one of those not for anybody who's who's you know violent sensitive. Like just leave that one alone. It's just it's good, but let it be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two months, man. We'll Ooh, it might be three, Blake. It might have it to might, another break. He in might there. be mad still. <laughs> and he still hasn't watched Daredevil season three, so what do you know? Invincible is good, and the boys are good. Can't wait for season four coming out. Yes, they guys. I mean, they're they're both pretty well. I, I feel like Invincible just so happens to be violent, whereas the boys fully embraces the violence and goes. Oh, the boys the is over the top. Yeah, yeah it's, it's but, but, but the, the funny thing is, even though the boys is over the top, it's still not as over the top as the comic book. So it's almost totally immediately. I mean, yeah, that's not a great thing. I mean, I mean, you you hear some of the deaths in the comic books, like, oh gosh, like that's just super violent. Yeah. But, and and a lot of times it's so like I feel like they kind of lean on the violence and gore and shock value too much because they got great characters, and I feel like sometimes they just go, Well, let's just go a little extra violent or a little bit gore, whatever. Anyway, so that's invincible. So whenever you guys get around to watching it, it's really good. Uh, next up, X Men '97 is back, commercial free right now, Chief. Um, and and I was able to watch the first three episodes. I sent critics those first three. They had a two episode premiere for everyone starting today, and I really liked the episodes. I thought they did a great job of bridging the '92 series. Ironically, I did not realize the show went five seasons, and so it actually is picking up in 97. I thought 97 was just a random, arbitrary year they chose, because like, all right, cool, but uh, it's a 97, that's when it ended, so that's why it's X-Men 97. I thought it was a lot of fun. In most cases, they got the old voice actors to come back, which I thought was cool. They did swap out the actress who voiced Jubilee, for an actress of Asian descent, kind of cool. Uh, the, the voice actor for Cyclops is no longer with us, so mm-hmm. that's why I'm gonna have him back. But I thought it was really cool. And now that it's aired, I, I can say this, that the voice actress who does, uh, who did Jean Grey back in the day, come on, pick it up really fast. There we go. Her name is, oh, of course, you take a long time for me to get to you. Um, where, oh, stop it. Sorry. So it always happens. Catherine Disher. She voiced Jean back in the day. 
and she's I guess her voice is a little bit different, changed enough that it was all right, let's let's give you another role. She's playing Val Cooper. So I love that she's oh. here, still involved in the show in a different way. I think that was really cool. And Jennifer Hale's doing the voice of Jean right now. And that's what's so cool. I loved how they were using their powers. Felt like, oh wow, this is stuff they'll be using in the in the movies, because we saw that. Excuse me, like Earth's Mightiest Heroes when there were moments from the cartoon that was done scene by scene in the MCU. And I think we're going to see some stuff like that because Cyclops using his optic blast is like, yes, that's cool. I've never seen this before. That was really fun. The whole, we've seen this in the trailer, so it's no spoiler to anybody. Gambit charging up Wolverine's claws, although I'm still trying to figure out the logistics and how that works because shouldn't they explode? Anyway, that was there. Storm was just like killing it. I mean, the way they were using her powers, Morph was really cool as well. Not just being able to disguise as a member, you know, as whoever, but now actually taking on the powers and abilities of those people. So I thought that was really cool. What did you think, Jace? I know you watch it. Steve, I know you're not going to watch it until it's all, all over and done with. I, I liked it. Uh, I, I, I liked how they came up with uh, using Morph as, was it Ultraman, where you can use one power at a time. I thought that was really cool. And then they had a did cameos, like, hey, you're not, you didn't see certain characters that he was using in the X-Men show right now. But it's like, oh, okay, we might see them later on. I was kind of Jeff. You could help me with this. They they changed the voice actor for Magneto, right? Yes. Yeah, he was the only one who was like, "Oh, that's not as the original X Men." I mean, Magneto, but it was a cool thing. Uh, Cyclops. They actually didn't make him look like a chump, which I was actually impressed with, because I, I mean, <laughs> the last was an X Men comic where he was basically mopey because Gene was gone. Gene, the Ew. Magneto actor, he's also dead. He died I, back in 2020. Yeah, I thought that. I thought that was probably the case. But I, I think the show was cool. It, it, it really does pick up right. Kind of. Oh, okay, this is the 80s. You had to. Uh, I've got to make sure I use. I use the Friends of Humanity, not what the acronym in my head stands for. <laughs> I thought they were nice, good jerks. That very much. It's like okay, if I was bringing a kid. To show way, you know, tolerance and how you know you can get around with people. These would be the perfect examples of, you know, these and aren't I, good people. So what your to your point, I thought they did an excellent job of not sledgehammering you across the head. I felt like this was also very true to the comp you know, decades ago, comic book take on the X-Men, where I mean it was right there. I mean, picket signs and all that stuff. I love the fact they weren't being nice and calling them no more mutants. They're like, no more muties. It's like, yeah, that I felt like extra mean and extra to the point of this violent mob type protester scene. And they're like, yeah, that, that's that's more appropriate to what they would call them. They, they wouldn't be like, oh, we're not giving is that you the name you prefer. We'll, oh, we'll go with that. Yeah, we're we're gonna go is if you again you want to use this as an example to kids, it's like, hey, these aren't the, your role models. You might see people like this in your world, but these are not your actual role models. These are not good people. And I thought they did a good job with that. I mean, I mean, they continued out after the last X Men. So executioner said, "I am not a, I am not a role model." Oh well, I, I, I kind of was mad, you know what, um, what didn't happen to him. But you know, it's a TV show. You're trying to show, you know, you're trying to show people change, turn into new leaf. But you know, Magneto was right. Okay, but whatever. All right, Jamelin's helping me out. Maybe since adamantium is virtually indestructible, it holds a charge. And when you strike something, the energy has to go somewhere so the claws explode their target on impact. Maybe, Jamelin, I'm going to give you the nice no prize because I feel like that's sufficient. That works for me. So thank you. Appreciate it. Spend disbelief, okay? <laughs> I mean, that works. That makes sense. I can energy transference. Chief, when do you plan on watching X Men 97? Well, are they piece, are they piecing it out? It's on a piece out. It's on a weekly basis, so you can enjoy the show every week. One I'm just waiting to watch this week, huh? One episode a week. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure that's what you said. I just want to confirm. One episode yes. a week. 
We had a two episode premiere this week. But and this is, this is Netflix? No, no, it's Disney Plus. Oh, this is but this is a paid service that we pay for. <laughs> <laughs> I see where he's going here. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying anything, man, because apparently I'm you know the the, the 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 chat, the comments are happy. They're just as giddy as hell. And um they enjoy it. And I'm not gonna knock uh Anybody's viewing experience. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Every Saturday morning, she yeah. go old school, go classic '90s style. You know, we'll get my big my big bowl of cereal, my super spoon. Okay, okay. Hmm. I probably die that Friday night, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. How many episodes is X Men? Yeah, so yeah, Gabe's kid. You know what I mean? I'm I'm the I'm the one who's out. <laughs> it's ten episodes this season. Ten Ooh. weeks. Gosh damn, you gotta make it ten weeks in this world. Nine it's weeks, not guys. it's not because they've done two episodes already. So mm. just just eight more. Uh the last episode is May 15th. Mm. <laughs> That's a lot. It doesn't look like they have it's been renewed for a second season. Just don't have a start date or when it should pop back up. But in mm-hmm. March, probably next April? year. In May, oh, okay. Then they're trying to. I mean, every, everything that gets another season always goes the next season, which mm. is lamer, especially with cartoons. It's hey, we used to get fifty-three episodes in a season. That's why you could say, hey, we can dole them out once a week. We had new stuff every week. When you're going eight an episode a season, I got a problem. Are you gonna have to start at the beginning? You know what I mean, I'm talking about you, man. You could actually watch X Men '92 and then get to '97. You know, by next week. Mm, is that the one with the cool intro? Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. That show. I love that intro. They even fixed the opening, which I really appreciated because not now Warpath is no longer on the heel mutant side. They replaced him with Lady Deathstrike. I appreciated that. It was random. And I was like, hey, look, they, they fixed that. So that was cool. Um, I like Bishop. I thought Bishop's power was really fun and cool, the way they implemented it. And definitely had that 90s style, you know, little, little puns. Here's a shot back at you. Nah, psych. And I was like, all right, cool. That works. Ryan says, I'm holding off on X-Men until Steamboat really joins the show. <laughs> no telling the war will turn into next week. Jace, any other thoughts? No. Um, like I said, I, I like the uh, cameos, and I don't remember seeing. And and this is something that you guys, probably, anybody who's watched X Men past, I do not remember seeing Angel Blue. Yeah, I'm which, pretty sure he was at some point in the show. Well, yeah, that means. I mean, that almost means. Well, that mean you had an X Men. I mean, Mutant Massacre. But I was like, okay, that, that was a cool thing. I think it's chief. I think it's actually worth a, a viewing. You know, I mean, just to get excited, to like, okay, I'll, I'll watch you know the next one, and maybe a month, and I can watch four of them. Or I think it's worth watching. I'm gonna watch it. I just, I just hate the. I've gotten very spoiled. Hmm. You've gotten very spoiled. Would being able to watch a show in its entirety that I pay for? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I mean, did. The problem is if 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 you knew they didn't have it all in reserve, I think you would be okay. Well, you know, it's a it's like if Saturday Night Live, I don't expect to see all of this season Saturday Night Live because they haven't done it. But when My, you have that w- that would go against the name too. Yeah. I mean, but when you have hey, we're holding our content, so we force you to get on, on our schedule. That is annoying. I mean, especially, you know, like is you, it really you, annoying? I mean when did this become a change? Jeff, you watch of- you watch twenty four after the whole season was out because you wanted to watch it in its entirety. That's how I wanted to watch it, but I'm not going to complain about them choosing to air it every week. That's well, just what they did. I didn't well, have to watch it when they I mean, here's, here's the good exactly, thing. Shaylin. Oh, light television, right? I mean, well, okay. But here's the good thing. You had a VCR. We both had a VCR. We recorded shows. That's what I did with 24. Yes. And I, I got, got half of it spoiled. spoiled. Yeah, but I learned to run away 
or go la 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 when <laughs> they had commercials for 24. Okay, that was my but, choice. But I mean, you know, this is what they were. This is what they do. They're just doing it like back in the day. Yes, it, it, and and it is back in the day. It's not back in the day. <laughs> but as long here's my thing: as long as there you go, Jason. I know a TV show isn't dependent on me watching the whole series. Because oh, you didn't watch it in time. We're canceling it already. I'm okay. But then when you say, hey, oh, you didn't because we didn't we we didn't week to week dole it out. Now, oh sorry, we've canceled it. Hope you enjoy watching Jupiter's legacy. Like, come on. I was that Archangel? It was. Oh, Jason was okay. talking. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, yeah I did. Just, okay. Yeah, sorry. Blake says, yeah, if you're an 80s kid from the 80s, you waited. But again, we are now again. That was a free service we got. We didn't have to pay for the TV. We used to have some rabbit antennas, and we got a good signal. Now we have to pay a hundred dollars a month for our various services. What are you buying? Cable, internet. We're not Netflix. talking about a cable show. We're talking about Disney Plus. Well, Disney Plus is seventeen dollars a month. Oh. Is it, is it that much? It's on. It's probably on auto pay, but yes, that's probably what you're paying. Oh wow! No, it's not that much. Now, now it goes to the phone, checks it out. Hush. Oh, <laughs> like, mm. mm. I mean, I feel like most people watch the reruns of Fox Kids. Yeah. Mm. Inflation's not going anywhere. Well, yep. I mean. I'm sorry your X-Men viewing experience has been tempered by the fact that it's a weekly episodic show. Even though they set it up with cliffhangers to oh, yeah. get you excited about next week's I'm episode. Sorry. I forgot to mention that cliffhanger, it was really good. I, I mean, we were talking that cliffhanger to me felt like a season finale cliffhanger. Oh, wow. And, very, and it was like, oh, wow, this is where you guys are going. But I don't even actually know where you're truly going. I think that was very much. If you're going to do week to week, that's the best way to do it. Let me jump out. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> but, okay, so later. as much as I am hating on it, when you have a cliffhanger and it's oh okay, that's that's why if if you actually watch Twenty Four Live each week was oh okay all right I'm I'm anticipating next week. I mean, Bro, to, I mean, to your to your argument about and, and this is a a real select example using 24. 24 was not great TV because they had the commercial breaks. Jack's about to pull the trigger. Tell me what it is. And then you go to a commercial break talking about a new Toyota. No, uh, I need all that adrenaline no, no. rush coming right at me. So okay. that, was, that that is that, that's like the worst example of a show. In the traditional means of hey, here's a commercial break. Twenty four is an adrenaline rush. You watch it all at once. But again, that's but, how. But no, but to, to even with this adrenaline rush, you still sometimes needed to actually build that anticipation. Like, oh shoot, what's he gonna do? Break. Oh, I press pause. I press pause. That's but, what I would do. But now I'd come back when I needed to. When I was finished decompressing, that's what okay. I would. Do. But again, play. So. And I'm gonna go and, and I'm, I've, I've used you say you're right. I have used uh, 24 toy. I'll go back to my. I think probably Why don't you do Smallville. No, I'm you gonna go Smallville. lost. I'm gonna go lost because literally you're going with another show in that same kind of format. <laughs> I'm going with a show again. I watched and this is one of those. I did not watch Lost Live. This is a giant caveat. But there is season. There is a cliffhanger in i believe season two that you very much oh i need i i should not go to the next episode you need that break like okay oh wow that's really i just realized which which cliffhanger you must be talking about yes and it's oh i mean it is oh wow this is getting a little so i don't know if i'm gonna stick around then you get to that cliffhanger i'm all in and if you give me a good cliffhanger it's usually a season finale. If we're going to use Smallville, there's a season when you actually get a season. I mean, there's one of most of them always end on a cliffhanger. You're like, okay, I will come back. I am wait. I will wait for October, September because I do want to see what actually happens to our favorite hero. 
Right. Lana? Chloe. Chloe. Come on. <laughs> ah. yeah. That was a I was. Wait, wait, wait. You know, couldn't stand Lana. Mark A wants to know, is there any chance now we're going to get an animated version of the movies with the sexy for X-Men in it without the black leather suits, obviously? Um, movie, animated version of the movies. Uh, man, I don't know. Those movies aren't great. I, mean, I feel like it, they were batting, in, in cheese terms, maybe like a 20%? Or is that is your, your average correct on that? Or should it be lower? Like 18%? Because they're real, real inconsistent. I feel like the show has been better than most of the movies since Days of Future Past. And I, I'd say First Class and Days of Future Past are the only good X Men focused movies. Are the rest of them watchable? I'd know? say period. I can I, you know, X Men and X Men Two. I feel they're so they're hard pressed great. to be lumped in as X Men movies just because of how they are. I mean, X Men, the, the original X Men movies are graded on exactly. the exactly. Well, Clark get a costume. Will he learn to fly? Tune in next season for his thirtieth birthday to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh, wait, this is a serious finale. You son of a. Yeah, it's 80s kid. Those X Men movies are garbage. You know what? I mean, I'd only defend two of them, and that's First Class and Days of Future Past. I mean, those, those leather, everybody's clad in black, black leather because we want to be so desperately the Matrix of superhero movies. They're not great. They're, they were passable back in 2000. They were passable. They're passable. No, they were I can't watch them again. Okay. I, I mean, Austin, I when you watch house. as much as I like Ian McKellen as an actor, in the X-Men movie, they made him look so freaking old. I mean, I, but I'm, I'm sorry. He looked younger as Gandalf, okay? I mean, Gandalf the white or Gandalf the gray? I mean, gray. I mean, he, he was a little fly. Um, Chief, Chief now understands that reference. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it, they I mean they tried to play up the age so much. It's like okay, for some reason in the comic book, Magneto is a built dude, you know, bench pressing four hundred pounds without yeah, using magnetism. But that, now everybody has Magneto that he's not a frail old man. It's it's he might not look giant Hulk size, but he does not look like a small dude. Even in the X Men ninety two. Come, I mean, in the cartoon, he doesn't look ancient. He's an old. Based dude. off the Jim Lee designs, but listen, I would not have complained if Terrence Stamp played Magneto, and he's not some buff dude. I'm like, yes, that's my Magneto. So I think the movies just aren't good because they overuse Magneto mystique, and they were so afraid to embrace the costumes. I feel like as they've gotten a little bit more comfortable, hey, people won't run away. They won't leave the theaters in droves if we have superheroes in superhero costumes. I'm looking forward to see what they do in the MCU, but I thought this was a really great bridge between how they could implement them in the MCU. Yeah. All right. Blake says, I remember the feeling I had when X-Men came out. I watched it, and then a few weeks later, I kept thinking about it. You feel something changed as far as superhero movies. It entered a new level. See, it was funny for me. I felt that way after watching Blade. I was like, what are y'all going to do next? Because Blade was awesome and the x-men was like eh, okay i guess this is the next step after we got blade and then spider-man i felt a certain way because i really felt like green goblin looked like the power rangers villain <laughs> and i was like how did you mess up this costume it's you know i mean it's it's not like oh it's so edgy and cool but the green goblin movie costume just looked ridiculous and i just wanted to hear some bad Dubbing was like, hey, I'm saying this, but my mouth is moving this way. Ugh, couldn't stand that look. I thought the coolest scene in the movie is when he was dipping and flying and flipping when he had all the stars and all the pumpkin bombs. How's it? I was like, why is he not talking? He's Spider-Man. I mean, they, they, I mean, at least the, the MCU at least understood, hey, yeah, that costume's stupid. We got to upgrade that because we can do that far better. Yeah, wish and, he, they, and, he, and he literally, he's like, hey, I look like a, ho a, dang near, a hobo. But I actually looks scary based on the actual expression on my face. If you actually have a green guy with, I mean, a mask actually looking scary, you can pull it off real easy. 
It didn't I have to like I would be afraid of a guy running around on a green mask. Chamberlain says, when I first saw X-Men the movie, people who knew I loved comics asked me what I thought. All I said it was cool. I think they made the best X-Men movie that they will that they will right now. Mm-hmm. I knew that things had to develop for the mainstream to do our characters some justice. Yeah. And it's wild because I feel like first clash class really should have been that push to go all the way. When did first class come out? That was when Mad Men was going on, so... Uh, that was 2011. Yeah. And they did costumes, the team. I just wanted them to go harder into that, because once, once... I always say this, but Avengers, Iron Man, changed the perception of comic book movies, where it was okay to like them. I'm a nerd! No, you're not. You're just you're somebody who now likes these comic books. Get well, over it. You don't need to try okay. to be cool. The reason they... The reason, if you were if you were a Fox exec, because I could pitch this, hey, Marvel is a campy one, you know, it's not as realistic. We are a little more edgy, so we're not going to lean into the com. I mean, the cart, the costumes, because we still have to make it so when they come in the black leather outfits, that's the evolution. So we're not going into the bright colors. We're yeah. we're the darker, edgier one. We so, prefer not to make a billion dollars with our movies. I mean, making money and losing licenses is what we have in store for you, okay? It's going to happen. Trash. Jalen says, oh, yeah, and Blade still doesn't get the credit it deserves for what has contributed to comic book movies. Listen, on this channel, I will say it every time. Blade was the, the comic book movie for me, for Marvel, because DC was rolling, and, and DC was definitely on a downward slope by the time Blade came around. I felt like it put a shock back into the comic book genre because I felt like Batman and Robin really tried so hard to kill it. Hey, speaking of, when we're going to do our Catwoman watch along, guys? <laughs> 80s kid, I have a Marvel magazine that talks about the history of the company, but it mentions how X-Men was groundbreaking. Then I watched and said, really? It was groundbreaking in the sense that for whatever reason, people didn't think comic book movies were going to succeed, which was baffling because it's a decade ago when Batman just took over everything. I mean, it was such an event in 89, like the whole buildup for it. Like people were really hyped up and excited for Batman and then it delivered at the box office. So it wasn't like, oh man, no one's ever going to see or pay money to see a comic book movie. Then we got a bunch of mediocre stuff afterwards. And I guess after what Batman Returns, because that was the last good one. No, uh, after I mean once you got to once you got to Batman, like I said, Batman and Robin, they tried to kill the kill the whole comic book idea. But I, I think technically X Men is groundbreaking because it is the first superhero team no. movie. Why why do you say that? No, I, I was I was answering Snake Eyes. We're not really going. Oh God, of course not. We wouldn't do that. No, but it was the first time they said, hey. We believe in comic book movies so much that we are going to invest in teams. So we got to hire not just one actor. We have to really lock these people down for multiple <laughs> movies. And that is actually something is groundbreaking. Because if you don't, if you don't have the success as much as we may, I might hate on it. If you, if those movies aren't successful, you may not get Avengers. Christopher Reeve was Superman four times. Michael Keaton was Batman two times. Chief, uh, what, what were your thoughts on Spider-Man and X-Men and Blade when they came out? What are your thoughts on them now? Uh, Spider-Man, the Tobey Maguire one? Yeah. Loved the first one. Blade was amazing. Uh, <laughs> X-Men was some cut. Uh, <laughs> and Michael Keaton Batman with the uh, Jack Nicholson as the Joker. I enjoyed that one, but I was young too. That was like eighty nine. I mean, yeah, from a point of context, I guess we all were young then. Well, what I'm saying is, if it came out nowadays, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it the way I did back then. Is what I'm saying. I think it had a um, for eighty nine. It was a a good movie, but me and my present, like I, I needed that Christian Bale joint nowadays you know what i mean like they couldn't deliver another batman movie has such to me now I, I, now was is that thinking after watching the nolan batman films or there was never 
the Batman movie, and Michael Keaton's was the first one that you saw now. Um, well, I guess it was good for what it was. I, I, I never, it was on TV. I never went back to it to watch, though. The Adam but West I, right? Huh? The Adam West ones? Or are you talking about the Michael Keaton ones? Michael Keaton one. Um, it's just funny. Because I I still watch those. And I think they're really well done. Not not just for back then. I think they're good movies. And I think Tim Burton had a good sense of what he was doing. Like colorful stuff in a dark city. Like Nolan was like, let me make this as realistic as I possibly can. But I mean, if you look at how in, the, in eight, Batman 89, Joker was his really star. I mean, Jack Nicholson was so good at that role. You, you mean, it was like, hey, if you want a crazy out, you know, every kind of personality version of Batman, I mean, Joker, he did a great job. What up, Keith? And, um, was in um, Michael Keaton, everybody, well, I don't know if he really could play Batman until you actually saw him. Okay, yeah, he's cool. He's Batman. He's got it. I mean, they want to get well, nuts. I, I, in, uh, 89 is awesome. All right, I mean, you can't beat that soundtrack. What's going okay. on? Oh, okay. yeah, it was it was really good. Keith Cooper doing the plug. Read the review <laughs> for Lyle's Movie Files. Thank you. Yeah. Jamie has a question for you, Chief. Who was Batman before 89? Who was Batman? Uh, Adam West. Right? Yes, sir. Um, which, I mean, again, young, you love the 60s Batman. Um, it was, you know, it was right, but it was silly as hell when you watch it nowadays. No, it was silly back then, but I like well, that because I was a little you, kid. I, I didn't notice the silliness to that degree till I got older. Like, I was watching Batman, you know, they bam, when, then they bam somebody, the bam came up. Uh, you know, Robin wow. was like, yeah, so, uh, I, I enjoyed that, man, but I'm saying, like, it also, like, when you go back and watch, like, the, the for example, the, the Superman with Christopher Reeve. Everybody loves those movies, right? Uh -huh. um, but they've First got sort of a... Half, yeah. What you about to say, huh? <laughs> they've got a sort of a silliness element to them when you go back and watch them, right? Just some some stuff that you you kind of be like... Uh, like, for example, he's he's got... Uh, I forget, was it Zod or no? Jace is about to come over and kick your door down. <laughs> who, who, Jace? What? Yeah, he, he really no. is. He's about to come um, through right now. And he's twirling him. He's got him one leg, one arm, and he's going around in a circle about to fling him. And that the crowd is, is like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> and I didn't notice that as a child, but as an adult, I was like, oh, in the background, I'm like grooving to it. Like, it just, it kind of made it like a, it was like a silly element to it that I didn't realize watching it as a child is what I'm saying. You know what, Chief? That's why we don't have a man of steel, too. So when I watch it, it's different now when I watch it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I love it. I watch. I, I watch Superman all the time, especially Superman two. Um, okay. When Zod, you know, when Zod them came, I, I, you know, it's not nothing that I'm hating on. I'm just saying that when you like, as an adult, I need a more adult Batman. Okay. I need a more adult Superman. And so when I watch those movies back there, I see kind of the silliness element that they had when they did them, and for that time period, which you don't get that silliness element no more in the new Batmans and then you know in these in these different things. And that's why they don't they don't last as long. Okay. Well, but that's all I'm saying. I mean, that's true, right? I mean, they don't Ooh. put a silliness element in it. It's more of a serious tone. Batman's out there, he's you know, he's the Dark Knight Avenger, he's kicking ass. But that's um, why we're always rebooting the DC universe. Because we don't, don't have, have to. We didn't have to reboot it. Batman has plenty of enemies. They're rebooting it to get your money because it's a corporate grab. <laughs> Superman 2 was great, sir. James says, so the Tim Burton ones might feel a little silly now, but compared to what came before, it was dark and edgy. Parents actually complained about how... Scary. How scary. Oh, scary, thank you. The Penguin was and how sexy Catwoman was. Sure was. I mean, you know, Penguin was scary. I mean, all the stuff he actually did it, I mean, Joker, you know, had to basically poison the whole city and killing people. Then you had Penguin, who was... they went with a smile. Yeah, but Penguin's biting heads on people, blood shooting out. I mean, 
I mean, his, the penguin walking in, yo, that's that's a little deep, scary. Hey, yo, yo, they dropped him. They, the penguins took him and took him into the water. Oh, kneel before Zai. Hey, the son of Jarrell shall be my slave. <laughs> man, me and my man, we hey, okay. laughing every time that joint comes right, off. You say you say it was campy, but I'm gonna actually I'm, I'm disagreeing because that was just based on the time period. If you actually pluck a Superman into the 80s, that would be the the, the life would actually be similar. Well, like, I said that. I said that, that based on those times. I'm saying, but I'm saying when I look back on it, I as an adult wouldn't have enjoyed them like I did back then. Like I can go back and still enjoy them. But I'm saying if they release something like that nowadays, I wouldn't enjoy it. I don't think children would enjoy it because they're not – our childhood is not their childhood. Yeah. So I mean, that's, that's yeah, all I'm they're, saying. They're, 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 they would need something more edgy than what we – I mean, it's I – mean, They would. No, they just yeah. need better graphics. That's what they would need because I was talking to Dwayne and, and, you know, he was talking about his younger daughter – not enjoying the 89 Batman. She's 13. 13. And she she just watched. She he we were just talking today. He said she couldn't watch 10 minutes of the Tim Burton Batman. She said it looked old. Mm -hmm. My gosh. I mean, yeah. yeah that, 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 that I have I, yeah. There's a lot of movies that's like, no, that's not gonna work because it's not an HD. It's not <laughs> the colors don't look right. I mean that 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 is your problem you're gonna have to deal with. I mean, on movies, anime, not as much, but. Oh. You would kneel down before Jarrell. You, and one day, your hairs. Oh, man. That's what I'm saying. That joint was good. I mean, like I said, I don't I have a problem too, with it. Jamelin. I really thought, ooh, what did he say? Yeah, hairs. Ah. <laughs> I've, I've never term. thought that. I've never thought that. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> the world in black and white. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I feel like it looks that bad. I mean, well, I mean the, you know, the kids would, I mean, like, if your dramas are here, he would say, his kids would say, thank this is something from, you know, the 1900s. And I mean hundreds, not 98, 99. So they would be on board, give me something on YouTube. But if you actually just gave them the actual story and actually read it as a book, they think it was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's Blake, always, right Blake always hitting, ain't he? Oh, wow. Huh? Blake always hitting, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, now you had asked me this earlier this week, Jay's. I know it's Wednesday, so <laughs> a lot of time has passed. You asked me, did you watch the Star Wars The Acolyte trailer? And at the time, I said, no. Why? Why would I do that? Because you, you know, we, we heard Leslie. Yeah, there we go. Helen. Helen. And let's see. Here. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find the headline that you, you said. Oh. Uh, so she did mention. Well, she was talking to the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, she wanted a writer who wasn't a fan of Star Wars. Yeah, I just thought it'd be good to have the perspective of a person that had literally never seen Star Wars until she was in the room. <laughs> I mean, here's, I mean, the article, the, the one I sent you the screenshot of, I should. I read the article, and I. And it seems like somebody kind of told her, "All right, here's something to put in here to make it look like you have more credibility than you did." It was. Oh, I really love the air, air to the empire books. I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not seeing that in anything else you're saying. Why you love the EU expanded lore? Because it it doesn't track. And looking at the trailer, I'm like, oh, okay, you have such reference for the EU. Supposedly, this is a hundred year before Star Wars. No, you can't have Sith in there. They're actually in the shadow. They don't really reveal themselves until Darth. I mean, Darth Maul. I mean, there's no. So if you say, "Oh, it's pushed a thousand years back," maybe, but a hundred years? No, you don't just reimagine Sith in there. And 
because now we're going to say, oh, this is canon. No, it's not. It's complete bull crap. It's crap to anybody who's going to see it. I, and I'm still sticking with my original, even after watching the trail, still not watching that series. So in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, um, she mentioned that she wanted to focus on the Sith and, and look at them. And she said she wanted to do an underdog story, that the Jedi are this benevolent institution at this point, then anyone who, who opposes them will be the underdog. Mm. I can chase Spanish. Yeah, Jace is out of there. I, I'm I'm still trying to grasp. Okay. If you wanted oh, to do something actually focusing on the Sith, this would have been right here. Dark thing. That would be where you could actually start. Hey, the Sith art could be your underdog. But trying to make be trying to have sympathy for the Sith? No, you don't. They're not actually good people. <laughs> like that's the <clears throat> I'm I'm gonna try, you know, Liam. You know, when you were actually, you know, delivering people to your ex-boss, he wasn't a good person either. Okay? Maybe he didn't get that part. <laughs> so, Ryan, I think you're asking why is that a problem that there is a non-Star Wars fan? Because I feel like too often in modern storytelling, they get people involved in these properties who have zero connection to it. And then they start to change up things where if they were maybe not a hardcore fan, but just having a solid comprehension of things, they would go, oh, yeah, I can't do that because that's ridiculous. And that would work in this universe that's been cultivated for all these decades. Maybe that person could come in and have some interesting questions. But I feel like in the case of this one, considering the director was like, hey, um, why is George Lucas the end all be all of Star Wars? I kind of feel like that's gonna be a problem. You know, Edlin's been on interviews and, and Jace, we uh we discussed that where she was like, I just don't like the patriarchy of Star Wars. Why does George Lucas get all the credit for Star Wars? So that's why in this case it's a problem. Yeah, I mean Jamie hey, wants to know Jace, did you read the Dark Horse comics? I read uh the one with uh Luke. When he goes to the dark side, I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, I think that's the last one I remember reading. Now Ryan says Dave Filoni is the biggest Star Wars fanboy in the world, and Ahsoka freaking sucked. Is that what he said, Jeff? <laughs> I think Ryan's got to be off the chat room. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I, yeah. Again. Is he serious? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I can't tell if he's being facetious or not. Did, did he? Did he not like Ahsoka? Really? No, I think Brian actually did not like Ahsoka. Okay, Ahsoka. Okay, that's um. Uh, Jace, right. you look like you were fidgeting to respond. No, I, 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 I that is an interesting take. I, I, I think if again, if you want to, if your company, your biggest asset is people who are actually the fanboys of the property they can expand the universe for, for a newcomer so if dave filoni says hey i can do uh force awakening so i could make it as using you basic some of the stuff that george lucas talked about you tell me i can't use any of the original characters i can still do a star wars movie i can still give you the same basic concept so it fits in with the universe and then I can make a, a good take on it. And so, I mean, that's why when comic books, when Jeff Johns, when Jeff Johns took over Green Lantern after they, did, I mean, basically destroyed Hal Jordan, he's like, don't worry, I can fix this. I can make Hal Jordan work again. I can make Bear, I can bring um, Barry Allen back as a Flash and make this work. So if you get the the fanboys and then they can help expand the universe, that is your best case scenario. And you're bringing in a whole, whole, a whole bigger audience. I mean, it, but if you have a Ryan Johnson, then it's everybody. Has right. I'm just saying, like, that's the easy to say, hey, I wasn't a fan. I'm going to deconstruct it. That's very much the sounds like what Le uh, Leslie's, hey, I do not like it. I'm going to deconstruct Star Wars. And you guys don't even know I'm doing it. 
Because you, well, you, I, I, I mean, says, it said that the underdogs. Huh? Yeah, it's, it, the, the evil people aren't underdogs. They're evil, okay? They're, <laughs> they're not to be rooted for. It's, oh, well, they're just misunderstood. No, they're not. <laughs> they're literally oh. misunderstood because they want to take over the galaxy and have it be under a fascist rule. That is not misunderstood. You don't want that. You want to Harvey deny- Weinstein is misunderstood too. No, huh? Harvey Weinstein is misunderstood as well. Ryan says, okay, my statement was too extreme. Only the characters and dialogue sucked. The rest was okay. And Chandler says, Jace, if you can find them, I highly recommend Tales of the Jedi, Dark Lords of the Sith, etc. Ryan says, sorry. We have a fundamentally different perspective on Star Wars. I'm not a fan of the prequels or the Clone Wars. And I don't think George Lucas is the be-all, end-all. Oh, man. Was that ding right on time there? I was going to say that was fine. Yeah. Telling you he's about to come in. Oh, he wants to he wants to come talk about it. Okay, go ahead. He's still on. <laughs> okay. Um all right. Uh I don't think is that, are you okay. formulating your response? Yes, yes, because I'm not again. I <laughs> this is Ryan's opinion. I'm not trying to attack Ryan. I want to like hey, because I need to help. Like, all right. Did you like Star Wars in general? Because I, I, I mean, I like the concepts of Star Wars. I think the prequels are. Ne- I mean, me, frankly, I don't. I couldn't even watch Star Wars anymore after. I mean, you have. I mean, me, I can't just jump, jump into four, five, six. It's like, nope, gotta give me the whole story, <laughs> and that recru- prequels, Clone Wars, and everything else. So I'm just trying where, to figure. Where out- are you in that? Where am I as far as the Star Wars this universe time. and George? Uh, the prequels, the prequels had its problems, man. Uh, I'm not going to lie about that. But it, they, uh, all in all, they were okay. I mean, I, I they were strong six for you. Well, I mean, they were they were okay. Um, mm-hmm. Some things, you know, like I said, they, they, they it was it had some problems, but they were okay. Um, I always felt like. They should have did a movie of the Clone Wars. Um, and as far as you know, uh, George Lucas, I don't. I wouldn't say he has to be the be end, be all, end all. But I mean, it is his creation, so you, you got to give the man uh, his, his propers. I mean, you can't just, you know what I mean. Uh, Pretend like he didn't he didn't kick it off. Um, you know, the first person to always kick it off is always remembered throughout history. You know what I mean? Um, King David. Yeah. You know? yeah, just, when, when it, whenever somebody makes the actual, hey, this is how it starts. I mean, even with Lucas, he said, hey, I had to basically have an idea of what happens in the prequels to make New Hope and so forth. So if he says, hey, this is what happens... Yo, I'm, I'm, you can't say that Yo, this is a creator. Okay, that's if he says this is what happened in the beginning and he actually wrote it, I'm not going to say Tolkien doesn't know what Tolkien wrote about in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's, mm, I mean, like I said, it is, it's, it's, all, it's all very possible. Hmm. Um, okay. Joe said, Jeff is telling me to watch the Clone Wars. Does the chat recommend them? Yeah, Clone Wars is cool. You know? Um, go on. Which one is the one that you always recommend to watch, though? The Clone Wars. No, but there's two of them. No, no, he's the bigger one. The, the series, Wars. not the... Jeff, he's, he's talking about the... I know six. what he's saying. And okay. I'm saying the Clone Wars. Clone Wars Micro Series, Clone Wars Extended Series. I like them both. What about Andor? What about Dre? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, Andor, good show. I mean, it, if, if you wanted to talk, I mean, to me, an underdog story is starting the Rebel, Rebel Alliance where it's not pretty, it's not nice. And that, to me, shows a very darker version. It's like, hey, these people were not 
all great freedom fighters, okay? It was some of the stuff was dirty. I, I think that's a great thing about Andor. Brian says, keep in mind, I'm also the defender of the sequels, despite their many, many problems. So yeah, we just have different opinions on the subject. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm saying the Clone Wars, like the Clone Wars in, in total, not title specific. But yeah. Wait, for me, I like three Star Wars movies. Rogue One, A New Hope, and Empire. If I watch those, I will finish it off with Jedi, but I don't love Jedi. And 80 says, forget about Andor and just watch Rebels and Rogue One. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm not sure what's up with the camera. Maybe. Uh, here we go. With Butch McRae showing up to the chat. He is in no K right now. Um, I'm not even sure if he's able to hear us in this. Uh, oh, maybe. Maybe. No. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess. There you go. <laughs> What's up, man? Um, cool. No, no That's camera cool. today? Oh, no. Let's, let's fix that. What's up, J. King? No, you're not, not like what you see. <laughs> oh, shoot. You're not going to be topless again. So, ah! we are back. I mean, I mean, no, no promises. <laughs> you know what happened to my camera, Snake Eyes? I don't ask stupid ass questions. <laughs> Fresh off a double I shift. Could. I have no time today. Are you wearing a robe? <laughs> yes, he he's in a robe. He's in a robe, bro. Yeah. He's in a robe. That's why I started laughing, man. Look at the car. Out the car. <laughs> oh, man. And to, well, his, left, is, is, to his left is, is four lines of white power. <laughs> My man is living the dream, bro. Okay. All right. <laughs> you ready? Jeff, did that did that put a smile on your face? <laughs> that was his king came up in this mode. Swing the continent the continental. You want some champagne? <laughs> Would you like some champagne? No, after giving that day. Hey James. Hey James, I've been at work since Sunday, you know. It's, it's rough out here. Mm. Streets is mad. I just, I, I just took lunch breaks. Mom house on her fast internet. <laughs> oh, hey Blake, me and you, me and you. <laughs> that was in such slow motion. I did not know what your mom was doing. I'm oh, not what man. you want. He's back, chopped and screwed. <laughs> now it's a party. <laughs> 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 that guy wants to know where you work at, kid. Hey, bro, feels like everywhere, Snake. Feels like <laughs> everywhere. Feels like I just got off a of Burger King an hour ago. <laughs> hey, hey, stepping in the lattice, man. You know you don't want to go to you don't want to go to no Burger King in these areas. <laughs> Call up hey, first. Blake, that's I, why I don't like you. The king works there. The king work there? Yeah, he's here. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. All right. So today we got another trip. Hey, Blake, I bet you don't know where my name comes from. I don't know where that came from. Uh, Blake's a movie guy. He'll, he, I bet nobody in the chat knows where this name comes from. I'm challenging you first, Blake. Where's that name come from? That's and from don't look it up. Butch McCray, man. He's huh? knocking everybody out. We say to you? The Boondocks. Butch. Huh? Huh? Nope. 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 <laughs> Wasn't it Bush McCray? No. Nah. I thought that was the big it was from, a movie from the nineties with Nick Nolte. I give. No, nah, that was I guess McCreary or something like that. Butch McCreary, I think, was his name. From Blue Chips. Butch McCray. I give you a hint. A Nick Nolte. There it is. Penny Hardaway. <laughs> For March that, actually, that actually works for March Madness. See, you got timely. I like it. Good job. Joe Kelly was on it. Blue chips. Oh. oh yeah, okay. That was Bush Magnus. <laughs> Butch Magnus. Oh, oh was it Butch Magnus? Okay. With Shaq, yes, sir. 
Oh, yeah. who else was chips? Oh, Cowboy Orlando Magic. Yeah. 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 Fox looked that up. <laughs> 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 All right, so we had another trailer drop. Alien Romulus. And did you guys see this trailer? It was like a strong. Which trailer? No. Did anyone on the chat see this this Romulus trailer while the guys frantically looked for it? No, I it was a minute. Why is it? But it was a really, really good minute. 80s, I don't think you should watch that trailer. A little, a little intense. But oh man. It was so good. And I was watching Predator earlier this week. The Predator still holds up. I'm sure to like, you know, modern kids, it looks dated oh, and all yeah. that stuff. But I thought it was great. And you know, I mean, just just the sheer amount of testosterone with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, mm. Jesse the Body Ventura, Bill Duke. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just exploding. I mean, we got the the big pose of them just holding hands and all, like arms locked. About the sh- epic handshake. Yeah, man. It's awesome. I used to see Bill Dudes big all the Sonny time. Sonny Landham, man. my man Sonny Landham, rest in yeah. peace. That, that joint was awesome. Ryan Ooh. says, the trailer looks awesome, but I've been acid burned before. <laughs> I feel like this one actually oh, go. not get down with the Prometheus movies, but this one I was really excited Ooh. about. The director of Don't Look, Don't Breathe, Don't Breathe. Yeah, he was on okay. This was Alien looks like a proper horror movie. Oh my gosh, (laughs) (laughs) they really were watching it right now. I was that's why I kept oh shoot, like that. Okay, that was good. (laughs) I mean, not birthday predator still holds up exactly. So good, yeah. I mean, yes, it does. I was watching like this is great. I mean, there's some language that would be so canceled right now in the movie, but wow. I mean, just the action felt like it was smart in terms of like how they were trying to fight him. It's like this was good all the way through. Yeah. And Joe, I love Prey. I mean, love Prey. So good. Wait, oh, oh, oh. You, you say that was dumb? They actually had the Predator. The Predator was in it. They said without right. the Predator, it would have been dumb. Oh, oh okay. I would keep watching like Predator movies. Still. I mean, what, what? I mean, what do you have with that movie without the Predator? What do you think of the of the of the trailer now that you just watched? I mean, it, uh, what happened? Is Ron gone? I'm not sure. I thought he was. All right, until he comes Say back. What? Uh, no, that's you, Jace. I, I, I okay. don't care, you, Jace. <laughs> you know, usually we see somebody on camera can tell me you're interrupting. <laughs> I can't really tell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch. <laughs> like Lonnie, I'm like, oh shoot, we actually interrupted. My bad. <laughs> Javon is. I don't know if he's talking. Did he talk to him minutes ago? Can't figure. Okay, so taking a hit of that sweet, sweet OJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. but. but uh, if you don't jump at least three times during that trailer, I am very impressed. That right. reminds you three times, huh? I didn't jump three times, but I like the trailer. Here we go. I mean, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen that one minute long trailer. That if you that reminds you of oh, this is what aliens look like when you first saw it. And I mean, I don't hope you didn't see that as a kid, but when you saw the original aliens, that looked. Very sci horror movie in space. This one very similar. Looks like a horror movie in space. Well, the first first alien was a thriller. This one looks like a horror movie in space. No, yeah. right. Ryan says Prey was awesome. Exactly. I have a nostalgic love for Predator Two, but I'm not sure I can call it good. Yeah. I, okay. Which one was Predator Two? Was that with Danny? That was Glover? with Danny Glover. Yeah. I, I Danny wonder. Glo- if that, Danny Glover. <laughs> I wonder if that movie holds up. I mean. I think I didn't, I didn't hold up when I watched it. <laughs> I'm too old for this. Yeah, yeah like I, I don't remember. I mean, I remember watching it once. I don't remember. I probably with didn't. vodka. <laughs> <laughs> How much lemonade is the question? <laughs> right. I would say about 70 30, going leaning towards the 70% of vodka. Vodka. <laughs> 
Oh, you saw Aliens before Alien. I'm trying to think. I think I saw Alien first, which worked out really well because yeah, that, I did. I watched yeah. that one with my cousin and was like, oh man, we were up late watching that toy. Like, uh, you hear something? I think an alien is coming into your bedroom. So that was that was wild. Yeah. And aliens was just like, oh shoot, because I, I was a huge fan of the Colonial Marines. I felt like that time they spent building them up really paid off when they started getting taken out. Yeah. The game if, you that, if you shorten that yeah. down 15 minutes, and no, if they didn't have any character development, that movie would have sucked. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. Alien? Really. Aliens. Where you're actually bonding with the Alien. Marines. Ah, this is that person that is that person that. And then when it all goes to crap, it's, yeah. oh, that's just cannon fodder. Who cares? Oh, Blake, and I feel like you have now challenged these guys for next week's episode, Best Movie Taglines. That could be fun. Ooh. I can, I can, all right. Hmm. I'm writing I like down. that. Yeah. yeah. All right. He's in town with a few days to kill. Okay. I like that. All right, that's a jump. Snake Eyes says, I love Sigourney Weaver and Aliens, and I love Ripley. She's awesome. Okay. One of the original action hero heroines. I've only seen Aliens. It's a great one to only see. I Jane says, my cousin showed me Alien with all the lights out. And the blinds went, yeah. I'm like, oh, God. It, it's great to watch it young. That's a beauty, man. Have, you didn't think you throw in like a red or blue light while you're watching it. It seems oh. better. <laughs> oh, no. that's Come on. That's torture. Um... Could you actually sleep? I, I, I'll, I'll do you one better, Jamelin. My parents took me to see Nightmare on Elm Street. I was four years old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, how many, how many days parents. do you want me to sleep in your bed? Because it, <laughs> Like, knock, knock. No. Build the bed in here. I messed me up forever, man. <laughs> Like, you're sleeping in bed and there's a hand coming out. Are you serious? I love horror oh, movies. Still yeah, this day. Freddy messed me up forever. King's oh. parents were in the 80s. Yeah. We don't have a babysitter, so guess what, kids? Ryan says, I watched Aliens on tape during a sleepover with my third grade friends. We all collectively realized this is a change I would play with the G.I. Joe toys going forward. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it was like, oh, shoot, this is how the G.I. Joes would yeah. be in real life. And yeah, it was. I felt the same way. Oh, King's parents win the 80s. <laughs> okay. No, they Ryan don't. Says, that messed him up so bad it ruined his Wi-Fi for all time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's up with my I'm, I'm, look. I, I don't know what's wrong with the Wi-Fi. I don't know. I don't know. It's all. Um, it's all good. I mean, another fun fact. It's, it's comedy. No, it's just it's it's terrible. No, I know it's terrible though. It's like I want to know what's wrong with it. Shit, I pay for it. Maybe I, I like how the Wi-Fi like also gives you time delay. It's like we're, we're, like they have a sensor button, like a seven second, like boop. That's you the say something about us. You're about to say something crazy. That vodka is about to kick in. I'm I'm like a. I'm like an NBA broadcast, man. I'm on a delay for all the curtain. <laughs> yes! Oh. Joe says, do y'all like the new Crow trailer? Nah. No. I, I did not watch I'm the new if, Crow Joe, I'm iffy, dog. I'm iffy, man. The Crow was a time capsule movie. Because you know why the crow worked work for me when it when it when it when it came out? Because it was the 90s, it was about grunge, it was about this. Now hmm? nipple tattoos. Say again, Joe. I mean, it was a it was a '90s movie. There's certain things that just don't work. That was built around like the the scene of the time, right? So, what are you gonna do to Crow now? He's a trap rapper that got killed in Chicago. He's like one of the O Block boys, and he gets killed, and he's back as the Crow. I mean, what? How does it translate? You can't. It it doesn't. To me, it just doesn't work now. I mean, do you have, I mean, was he a rocker? I mean, maybe half of him was a yeah. rocker. He was in a grunge band. Yeah, that, that doesn't work band. now. Yeah, There's no rock bands. <laughs> well, no band. rock bands. Everybody has to do trap. Even country. No I just don't understand. Silly as shit. 
Uh, let me see here. Ryan asked a question, and uh, we can ask our resident horror aficionado. I don't know anything about Fede Alvarez, the director of this new Alien. Mm -hmm. Are his movies well liked by horror fans? Oh. Chief, are Fede's movies well liked by horror fans? Don't Breathe is one. Evil Dead is another. The Evil Dead from 2013. Uh, I did Don't Breathe 2. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, calls Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2022. What's the word? I would say yes. I mean, nice little horror, nice little horror, uh, co collaboration there, collabo, collage. Um, and uh, we'll see how this new alien movie shakes out. But, um, uh, I watched the uh, I watched that old uh, Texas Chainsaw joint with the recent one. When I uh -huh. went down, um, it was halfway decent. Uh, the Evil Dead, the newest was that the newest one, or was that the one from? This was back in where'd you go? You said 2013, 2022. Yeah, that was the newest one then. Oh, he's the newest one? Evil Dead was the 2013. They redid Evil oh, Dead, uh, uh. Didn't they redo it with the with the book in the in the apartment building? Yeah, they just that, I think they did just do one of that, but I wasn't think that 2022? Was, no, I think was, that. you know how creative they are. Evil Dead Rise was that one. That was just last year. What year is this? What year is this? Um yeah, so I mean, I, I I would say so. I'd say you've got some decent ones on there. Uh, I'm trying to think what the other Evil Dead was. I know I've seen them all. Hmm. hmm. No classics, but his direction is decent. All right, cool. Yeah. I was just asking, would you would you call? Because I think um, uh, Don't Breathe is actually a real. Cla I mean, it could be a new classic horror movie. Well, I mean, Jamal and the rustling sound is very much like how it would be in like your last one. If we were in a pandemic era horror movie, the killer would be in King's house and we were here to kill before we saw it in reduced frames. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Jamal, we were like, Javon, watch out. We're behind you. What are you doing? That was, that was I can't oh. hear you. That, that was in Scream, Jeff. That, 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 Look, that should be a movie that seems like that. You couldn't shoot it here because let me tell you something. You'd have been gone because everybody in the house would have made so much damn noise that you would have had ample time to get away. There's no way you could have done it here. <laughs> a quick escape. All right. Uh, I know a lot of you guys were excited about this upcoming Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Didn't look like critics are, are really feeling it. Jeez. Uh, right now, it's at 46% on Rotten Tomatoes. I know some of y'all don't care what the critics say. It's at 98 reviews, so that's not awesome. Um, so that breakdown is 45 fresh, 53 rotten. Hmm. I'm trying to remember what the last one did, because the last one, Afterlife, had 64%. Critics were 94% on it, so... Wait, I may have said that wrong. Critics were 64, audience was 94% on it. So a huge discrepancy between fans of Ghostbusters and critics. So if that holds up, maybe this will be like a 76% uh, fan reaction to it. So maybe not as good as Afterlife, but not as terrible as the critics would have you believe. Are you guys excited about this one? <laughs> that means it's good. <laughs> 80s kid, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come on here and spoil anything. I hate watching anything, including in titles of videos where they spoil stuff. So I'm not gonna do that, especially for something that's not out for everyone to see right now. I'm still gonna see it. I don't care what the critics say. I'm gonna go see it. I like the last one. It tugged all yeah, the right heartstrings. Yeah. The ghost of Egon helping his granddaughter. That was just it was a good it was a really good touch. I would still see it. Who cares? Atham says nobody cares what the critics like Jeffrey Lyles think. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I never saw it. 
The last, it's nice, right? Check it out, Chief. Check it out. The last one I saw was the girls. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna mute my microphone. It was hilarious. He was laughing so much earlier than he was laughing on the screen. It's like the worst dubbing ever. <laughs> it was so long. Like, it's a so you got a straight way. face, and you can just hear the laughter. Wow. Okay. All right. So this movie comes out this Friday. Ryan says, no, next Friday. I'm sorry, it's 28th. Ryan says, the trailer makes it look too CGI heavy for me. Maybe it's a 1984 influence, but I prefer a light special effects touch for Ghostbusters. 80s Kid says, Afterlife was great. Still from Frozen Empire. Stickman says, the original Ghostbusters movie is the only good one. Hmm. Come on, Stickman. Too hot to handle. Too cold to hold. They call the Ghostbusters in it. In control. In what? That movie sucked. Yeah. I'm sorry. I tried to watch those. Movies. That thing it really sucked, does. Man. That shit I mean, everybody like knows the song. Yeah, watch it. The movie sucked. Yeah, the movie stunk. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna need to rewatch too. Then I don't feel like I think of that as a bad movie. Jeff, it's it's not good. <laughs> I'm, gonna watch, I'm gonna rewatch it. The, the painting, the slime, the ooze. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Hey, Chief, what do you got with Ghostbusters Part Two? Dancing toaster. Oh, uh, that was with um uh, Fiegel, Smeagol, Fiegel. Yes, the, Ryan. The, the the picture, right? Vigo, 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 the immortal. Uh, the part two, the part Vigo, two. the big bad Gordian. Wasn't very good, man. Oh man, it was Then they because the characters were kind of stupid. Uh, yes, the, it the, is Blake. The, the dude from the the dude who liked her. He was weird. He was. He was a weird little dude. Yeah, and then he was like, he wasn't realistic in any way. Ah, um, right. the Carpathian. Um, Joe he Kelly, you out, man? That's, listen, it's nine thirty. I'm not gonna be far behind you. But I'm just gonna click off and disappear. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. So let, let me before you roll. I got just a couple more things. All right. So Superman and Lois. In his final season on the CW, the only reason, I guess, that and All American, because they basically canceled all the rest of their scripted programming. All American is uh, last season too. Damn, I think Problem. so. No, hmm. I'm not sure. I, I, that starts April first. Now, bad news, Chief. They're not going to have it in a bingeable format. You're going to have to watch it week to week. I don't uh, even know you watched All American. Huh? Uh, I haven't watched it for a couple of seasons, but I used to. Oh man, it, it it is the it's the worst entertaining show. And the writers Damn. do not keep track of anything they write. They will recycle plots from just the previous season with different characters. Mm. It's like, did you all forget? I didn't. Anyway, wow. Superman and Lois has hired Skylar Gosandon. I'm sure I butchered that last name as Jimmy Olsen. Now yeah, Chief. Right, right, right. That that look, that's exactly what I wanted to see. That, huh? That doesn't make any sense. And, and why did you have that look, Chief? Uh, don't even get me started on Superman. <laughs> don't no, even do this, it. Is, this is not, di- this is the CW show. Not- it doesn't, it, let me tell you, any show with Superman right now, because um, I don't even watch the CW anymore. Uh, uh, but but you guys enjoy it. You tell me all the time how much you love it. Why are they cancel it? Is it James Gunn? Is he telling y'all y'all can't watch Superman no more? <laughs> Superman? Actually, Chief, that is that's what the rumor. That's what now is kind of leaking out that they didn't want to have the confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he letting you know what it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. Uh, I, I don't know. I think yeah, it's, y'all it's enjoy really- it, right? Didn't y'all like that show? Quality show, like really quality. Chief, let me say this: I didn't like their cliffhanger because it seemed it it was very much a hail mary. Let's try and get, let's try and get picked up for another season. And the last when they introduced Lex Luthor, usually is oh, this is going to be the really cool part. For some reason, that didn't work in this one. Um. <laughs> hey yeah, I can't do this for no y'all, man. Uh. 
the table. It's not even real time. We don't even know how long ago he moved. <laughs> it's so, all right. Eddie's kid did not care for the Walmart Lex. Damn. Yeah, Lex. Um, and the actor's good. I mean, it was just, hey, he's bald headed because he wants to be bald. Yeah. Lex, Lex wasn't great, but the rest of the show I thought was really good. And they handled what could be a potential landmine or terrible storylines with the kids fairly well. But it was really like a great Superman portrayal, a really great Lois Lane portrayal. So I can forgive that show for its little dumb stuff. Um, I mean, it's CW, so you know you're going to get some CW plots in there. But the Superman and Lois stuff really elevated it to well beyond the rest of the Arrowverse shows we've been getting. Blake says, Jamelin, you're on King Duty. I'm taking a break. <laughs> mm. At least it ain't the WB. Um, so that's the one good thing about it, man. Uh, we just have to see, man. We just have to. I, I, somebody will pick them up if they're doing that well, if they got that big a fan base. Maybe Netflix will pick it up or something. Or, no, they're, they're, they're shutting it down. No, they're done. No, no, I mean, the problem, yeah, Jordan was. They couldn't figure out really. They can't figure out what what version of Jordan they want to go. Does he not like people? Does he like people? Does he want to be popular? But he, yeah, he's got anxiety issues. But he wants to hang out with everybody in the party. I, I never, never really understood. <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing. No, we we heard of a topic and we're just going to use it. We don't actually know what this actually means. Right. Um, the problem I have is why are you introducing Jimmy Olsen? The final season. This is, I mean, because they cut out half the cast, but to bring Jimmy Olsen, not in Metropolis, into a paper that there's only three people here. Why? Why are we? Why are we bringing Jimmy Olsen? <laughs> I, don't, I mean, just if your hail mary says, you know who's going to save the day? Jimmy Olsen. You, you, you lost. Lost. It doesn't matter. They already know it's done. This is not a situation of maybe Jimmy can keep us going. I, it's just like whatever. Although I think it's dumb to introduce Jimmy Olsen when you already had a James Olsen running around with some of these characters already. That's yeah, what's remember, that, that was in a different world. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> one one with a supergirl that doesn't damage cars. What a David. <laughs> Hope you had no. a good toy hunt. Oh, cool. My fault. I, I, now that one I always have to, to side with Chief on. All right. Last last bit of news. So it seems like a new James Bond has been cast. No official news just yet. But the word on the streets is Aaron Taylor Johnson is going to be your new Bond, James Bond. What do y'all think? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Devon just did not care. Kick ass, huh? Huh? Kick ass, right? Yeah, he's literally going to be doing it. Okay. Um, you know what, man? Doesn't matter anymore, man. Kiss. Oh. Hey, does it matter? Uh, no. I don't even know where y'all went. Um, yeah, man, it just doesn't matter. None of this, none of this is real anymore. We all live in the matrix, you know. Um <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's that's probably gonna happen. You know, we're just no, waiting, we just waiting to, job to job exit our pod, it. man, and get picked up by one of the one of the vessels, man. Man, that's bleak. Um, bleak, not bleak. He's craving too, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what, I don't know, man. Because I, 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 I see him, and I don't see Swab or Debonair in the in the way he moves, man. Did you, know you see um, Bullet Train? Yeah, that's what I was gonna. Sh- sh- no, I had other stuff to do that day. He's pretty good in that. You know I mean? I'm not saying he's not a bad. I'm not saying his acting skills. He's just he's always been a physical actor, but not cool. Most of the roles I've seen him. Okay, you watch Bullet Train because he he plays very well against Brad Pitt. So so you like him for James Bond? Is that what you're saying? That's an interesting choice. Okay, I don't know if I like it, but that's an interesting choice. You just want to get he's- asserted. You want to be somebody important. And perhaps whatever you ate tonight, maybe it was a steak, but your mind's telling you it's a steak, 
even though you know it's nothing there. All right, Matrix. <laughs> he's plugged in. I think he's he's young enough actor where he can play Bond for four or five movies. And when they put him up with a love interest, it won't be a thing of, hey, she's young enough to be his daughter, like with Daniel Craig, an old girl from the last two films. And stand their chemistry either. So it's Daniel Craig. He was cool. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and let me ask you this. I mean, you know, and if Bond is in his late 40s, why would Bond snuggle up with a girl in her late 40s? Because it was Monica Belushi? Um, but that was one scene. I mean, that was all, that was supposedly a pe- previous love interest that he kicked to the curb for the eighteen-year-old. Then we'll be. Aaron Taylor Johnson's thirty-three. Just in case y'all were curious, I did want to see myself. So there you go with him on that. Well, you guys enjoy that. I don't even know why we needed a new Bond reboot anyway. Yeah, well, Ryan. I, I mean, seriously. Like, I mean, throughout the 90s to the mid-2000s, yes. Have you seen Monica Bellucci lately? Oh. <laughs> Watch it. And I don't want to. <laughs> I feel like you've got a big jug of cold water that you're trying to dunk on my head like I want to see. I mean, I mean what was it? Not bullet, to, not bullet to the head. Um, Shoot him up. Shoot him up. Oh, that, yeah, with the, the dude when they had the love scene. I was more talking. I mean, the, the fact that they were smuggling, what they were smuggling around in that whole movie. No, no problem. I, I was just saying she would have been a way better love interest for Bond in that movie than going back to old girl, who I didn't think had much of a spark on screen with Craig. And I just felt like they were like, well, let's bring her back because we didn't kill her off in the last movie. And when do we recycle the Bond babe? I was like, what are y'all even doing? She shouldn't be back. And I didn't think she was great anyway. If you like Monica Belushi, don't watch Irreversible. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, fellas, it's that time, the magic time of this week. Who are your nominees for Dummies of the Week? Jace, it just so happens that the Square app that I was using to choose somebody to go first landed on you. So I guess we're going to go back to you. Wow. That that is so shocking. Um, My Dummy of the Week is whoever ever greenlit the idea that we needed never-ending story movies. Uh, movies. Movies. Plural. Ne- never-ending story is... I, I, I mean, I know, like I we said this earlier, Javon, your kids probably wouldn't watch never-ending story because they'd say it was old and dated, but for anybody... I who, tried. Yep. But for anybody who has to watch, who watched that when it was out is wow this is you you you're not gonna top this i mean these kids can't deal with a tray you you know not not coming home okay <laughs> i don't think you can make i don't think you can do that again i think i mean if you want to see some old people review bomb i think this is the movie you're gonna be like don't touch my movie you idiot mm, bobby yep <laughs> yeah so <laughs> well, I just thought that was a good idea yeah they, they gotta go it's never ending. It's in the title. I oh, know. Hard to argue with Blake, Blake on that one. All right, my nominee for Dummy of the Week has to go to the fine folks who decided to make Madam Web. It is now available to buy and rent on digital, so you don't have to wait any longer. You don't have to deal with all the crowds in the movie theaters. You can just watch Madam Web from the comfort of your own home. <laughs> um, so. Wait, why did that ringtone sound? <laughs> he went back to the future too. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're not very modern around here, fellas. <laughs> that felt like a vintage ring. Uh, Jay King. You know what? Nominee? Everybody who says or talking shit about my internet, I don't care. I don't care. This is the highlight of your week. That's how sad it is for you. You got some funnies. Good for you, asshole. But anyway, I'm going to say the Dallas Cowboys organization because they're stuck with Dak Prescott. And look, Leighton Van Der Esch's neck, he was going to retire anyway because he just physically can't do it. And it's a shame because he's 
really, he was really one of the top linebackers when he was healthy, man. So soon. He's only 26 years old. It just shows you, man. You ain't nobody's promised a 10-year career, let alone five. Um, uh, the Cowboys overpaid a caretaker quarterback. And look, I'm not just taking that because Cam Newton said caretaker. That's been a long used phrase, but I always said that. Well, when he said that, I said, Cam, you could have had a longer career if you were a caretaker quarterback. Um, <laughs> seriously, tell me I'm wrong. If you were a caretaker, you'd still be throwing passes in the NFL. He would be fighting um, off would, dudes at a little league game. At a That's little sure. league game. Come on, man. Stop him. And take that damn. Your, your, your head looks like a potted palm tree. Stop, dude. Nobody. It, it, it's not It's not working. It's not working. Whatever you're trying to accomplish with that. But anyway, um, the Cowboys organization overpaid for Dak Prescott. And it's their window was like four to five seasons long. And they pissed it away. And now they got some real questions to answer. Um, I don't feel bad for the organization. It's just, it's just dumb move after dumb move. When you shouldn't have signed that and should have gone after somebody like, I don't know, uh, Lamar Jackson, when you had a window, they should have done it. I would have overpaid for Lamar and Dak. Uh, numbers aside, he ain't no playmaker. Um, and who? And my winner of the week is Kirk Cousins, man. Kirk Cousins keeps winning, dude. Winning. Winners. They winning. Paid. Winning. Hey, uh -huh. not one. He's got one playoff appearance, right? Or no, two playoff appearances, <laughs> one playoff win. Said, and he's your got playoff one. wins. I'm paid. Dude, how much How much guaranteed cash did he get? There was a graphic on that. It's crazy. Oh, he's gotten at least $400 million. Guaranteed? Like yeah, in his career. Tom Brady didn't have that in, with all his Super Bowls. Right. So tell me who's the winner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Chief, who is your nominee? Tommy's wife. <laughs> Very, dramatic. <Wow. laughs> Very dramatic. Isn't is it worth it? Is it worth it? She gets a good deal on a workout plan. Bro, she doesn't get a good deal on clothes. <laughs> um, I just feel like, how? Oh, who? Kanye is not only fully dressed, Kanye is dressed warm. It's not even like he's got on a short set or something, some shorts, short sleeve shirt. Kanye, long sleeves. Jogging pants, he's bundled well, and his girl is wearing dental floss. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, like, why? Like, what is what is going on right now? I don't understand it, and it's not for me to understand. And 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 but isn't that your wife? Mm. No, it's it's a I mean, dang God. I think she's a traveling model. I think that's what it is. Is that what they call him nowadays? I, th I think that's really because he, it's, 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 hey, I miss Kim, but I'd also like to have you model what I would like, what I think you should wear. What the heck is this? Okay. What are you looking at? I'm going TMZ and you can see the dental floss look. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just go on TMZ. I'm messing with what her outfit looks like. Just... Is this the silver top piece? No, I don't think this is not colored. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. We'll, 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 we'll send it off offline. Yeah, that's, that's the only way you can see it. Right. <laughs> Ryan says, she hulk star Megan Stallion is naked on the promo for her new hot girl store. Just say <laughs> Um, is I like how you, I blasted She Hulk with that. <laughs> so you're just not feeling like what uh what uh Mrs. Kanye is doing, Mrs. West is doing. No, I'm not feeling that at all, man. It's not a good look. All right, well, fellas, have you done your brackets? Are you ready for it to get busted after the second round of games? Second the late night stretch of games. Second you're round obvious. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about like the, the evening state of games. 
Yeah, man. Well, that's it's, when you normally get real. your first upset, right? Yeah. You normally my, get our my, first upset in the evening set of Thursday games. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen on that deal. It, it's going to be something. Watch Grambling beat Purdue and it's all mud after that. <laughs> it's going to be something stupid just like that. All right, well, hopefully I win. All right, well, fellas, thank you as always for hanging out and rolling with us tonight. Big shout out to Blake, Ryan Daly, 80s Kid from the 90s, David Thanos, James Green, Joe Kelly before Jamelin Parks, Afton Child, Snake Eyes, Mark A. Am I forget anybody? Did I get everybody? I think I did. James Green, Ryan, David Thanos. Oh, dang. Kanye and his girl were going to the cheesy effect. That makes sense. Yeah, right. And, and Joe Kelly. Stop it. I said, and you got to get some space, you know, when you get the cheesecake. All right. Well, fellas, thank you all for rolling with me. I will be back on tomorrow, as always, for another edition of Loud Figure Files. But for now, this episode of Loud Movie Files has been fun.